Good evening. My name is Scott Hoffman. I'm a member of the third grade team here at the American School of Bombay. My teammates and I have had the pleasure of working with our next speaker, Dr. Helen Barrett. Nineteen years ago, Dr. Barrett began her initial work on electronic portfolios. As a pioneer in the field, Dr. Barrett is often introduced as the grandmother of ePortfolios. In 2005, she retired from the faculty of the College of Education at the University of Alaska Anchorage. She is an Apple Distinguished Educator and a George Lucas Educational Foundation Faculty Associate. In 2007, Dr. Barrett received the first European Institute for E-Learning Lifetime Achievement Award for her contribution to ePortfolio research and development. Over the past six months, it has been the pleasure of ASB's third grade team to work with Dr. Barrett. <clears throat> she has guided us and several other ASB groups in our first efforts to explore the potential of ePortfolios for our students. Her extensive experience in support of powerful, lifelong learning has helped us set our own trajectories and aims for our students and their lives. Thank you, Dr. Barrett, and welcome to TEDx ASB. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. And I was so excited today to spend some time in those third grade classrooms, really seeing students excited and engaged about their own learning. I'm here to talk to you about my latest research about interactive portfolios. I'm writing a book on the topic, doing some research here, in New York, in New Zealand, and all around the United States. Within that context, I've been exploring how the boundaries are blurring between electronic portfolio development and social networking although there are some distinct differences. Now, I'm not suggesting that you use Facebook to do your e-portfolios. <laughs> However, there are two themes that I want to talk about that are evident across the lifespan with both e-portfolio development and social networking, those of technology and reflection. Electronic portfolios have been with us for almost two decades. Scott mentioned I did my first study for the Alaska Department of Education in 1991. Now, there was no internet at the time. We were using, we were thinking about CD-ROM. E-portfolios are used primarily in education to store documents and reflect on learning, provide feedback for improvement, and showcase achievements for accountability or employment. As defined in a JISC publication from the UK called Effective Practices with ePortfolios, the ePortfolio is the central and common point for the, student e for the student experience. It is a reflection of the student as a person undergoing continuous personal development, not just a store of evidence. How is social networking impacting electronic portfolio development? It's having a huge impact on our social and political world. Social networks have emerged over the last five years and are used by individuals and groups to store documents, to share experiences, to showcase accomplishments, to communicate and collaborate with friends and family, and in some cases, facilitate employment searches. So I'd like you to think, what are the engagement factors that drive the use of social networks, and how can we incorporate these factors into ePortfolios? How can we integrate ePortfolios with what we know about social learning and interactivity? The boundaries are blurring between ePortfolios and social networks. As we consider the potential of lifelong ePortfolios, will they resemble the structured accountability systems that are currently being implemented in many educational institutions in the United States, especially in teacher education? Or are we beginning to see lifelong interactive portfolios emerging in, uh, as mashups 
in the Web 2.0 cloud, you know, using things like blogs and wikis and Facebook and Ning and Flickr and all those Web 2.0 technologies we're having fun with these days. As shown in this diagram, I've envisioned a digital archive for life that can follow an individual from informal learning in the family. How many of you have recently gotten uh, Facebook posts of newborn babies? Okay. Um, and what about the popular development of scrapbooking? These all have portfolio-like activities. And of course, in formal education, we're seeing uh, portfolios being implemented, but also um, using them for professional development. And you know there's some very interesting research going on right now, funded by the Alzheimer's Association, interestingly, that, that's called memory, uh, memory Enhancers. To help people who are losing their memories, they, they construct multimedia biographies of these people uh, with pictures from their life. And they use that to help people remember. So, I recently published an article about this topic in uh, a journal called On the Horizon, and it is uh, also linked from my website. Here's some basic concepts. Both e-portfolio development and social networking are both process and product. Process is a series of events, uh, both time and effort, to produce a result. It comes from the old French word, which means journey. And product is the outcome or the results of that activity or process. You might say it's the destination or it's the physical result. The traditional portfolio, and I realize this is a lot of text on the screen, so, um, and I'm going to explain this in much more detail in my workshops uh, tomorrow and the next day. But, the, but you'll see here the traditional portfolio literature talks about these processes in the left-hand column. On the right-hand column, the very right-hand column, is the value added of technology in that process. And in the middle, I've added the different processes that are involved in social networking. And maybe you can see some of the similarities there as you go through uh, the process. There are many similarities, as I said, between those two processes. The major difference is often in intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. Dan Pink describes the essential elements of true intrinsic motivation in his new book called Drive. The concepts he discusses are autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So I'd like to take a look at how do these principles apply to electronic portfolios. He says this concept of intrinsic motivation is, de is devoted to becoming better and better at something that matters. And it connects that quest for excellence to a larger purpose. So he, he, he identifies two types of motivational behavior, what he calls type X, fueled by extrinsic rewards or desires, and type I, where behavior is self-directed. I'm on a campaign right now to make electronic portfolios a more intrinsically motivated process. Pink quotes uh, internet scholar Clay Shirky, one of my favorites as well, who says the most successful websites and electronic forums have a certain type I approach to motivation in their DNA. They're designed often explicitly to tap into intrinsic motivation. You can do the same thing with your online presences if you listen to Shirky and create an environment that makes people feel good about participating, give users autonomy, Keep the system as open as possible. And I think that's good advice for, electronic, for developing e-portfolios. The urge for self-direction is a basic human need. 
It's a, it's a natural state to be active and engaged. Just look at it at any kindergarten classroom. E-portfolio implementation should adopt the motivating characteristics of autonomy found in social networks. That of choice and voice, sharing and feedback, and immediacy. According to a tweet I recently read, true mastery is not possible without fun. There is an inherent exhilaration in learning. It's fun to get better at something. Why do we play games or play sports? Is it for compliance or personal mastery? Look at the open source movement. Pink talks about the popularity of that user-generated Wikipedia versus the demise of the professionally developed and Microsoft Encarta. Open source authors and programmers do it for free because they're looking for a challenge and improvement and participation in a community to make a contribution to the greater good. In their spare time, people gravitate toward activities where they gain mastery. E-portfolio implementation should adopt the motivating characteristics of mastery found in social networks. Flow, showcasing achievements, increased self-awareness, and self-understanding. Pink says only engagement can produce mastery. Csikszentmihalyi popularized the concept of flow as a feeling of energized focus. According to Wikipedia, flow is a single-minded immersion and represents perhaps the ultimate in harnessing the emotions in the service of performing and learning. In flow, the emotions are not only contained and channeled, but positive, energized, and aligned with the task at hand. The hallmark of flow is a feeling of spontaneous joy, even rapture, when performing a task. According to educational blogger Will Richardson, our job in education is to engage, deepen, and extend a student's passions and interests. Thomas Friedman, in his book, The World is Flat, presents this formula, CQ plus PQ is greater than IQ. In other words, a student's, if a student is curious about something and passionate, that's more important than their innate intelligence. Learners find their voice and passions through choice and personalization. A portfolio should be a student's own story of their own learning. It can support positive digital identity development or personal online branding. In my earlier research on the e-portfolios in high schools, some of the students called their e-portfolios their academic MySpace. We should use portfolios to document our mastery of skills and content, showcase our achievement, share our expertise, support personal and professional development. Pink's third concept is purpose. All of us want to be part of something larger than ourselves. When people learn, they want to know the relevance of what they are learning. And more the more people understand the big picture, the more they will be engaged. Here's a good question. Got purpose? Because purpose and passion coexist. This book, one of my favorites, is called Portfolio Life. It's aimed at those of us who are planning for an extended midlife transition, which starts around age 50. And I'll bet there's a few of us here in the room. It is that time in our lives, after the empty nest, 
and before infirmity. A portfolio life involves an intentional combination of passions and pursuits, of envisioning new possibilities. It is our opportunity to plan ahead, visualize a new life, leave a legacy. Erickson calls it generativity. We're not facing retirement, but rewirement. To quote the authors of this book, um, portfolio responds to a calling that is knit into the fabric of our very being. It is about what our motivations are, what makes us feel most alive. Portfolio development is what our true work should be, for it's where our deep gifts and our gladness meet the needs of the world. For those of us lucky enough, it is the age when, he, when we enjoy our grandchildren. These are mine. The, uh, Corbett goes on to say, a portfolio is literally a balanced collection of holdings related to one person, such as financial assets, job responsibilities, artistic works, and accomplishments. It's something portable, something you carry with you. The portfolio represents the whole. It represents what you have or have done as an expression of who you are. There is a portfolio way of thinking. Careers have a shelf life. Portfolios can be timeless. Expands, portfolios expand into a mindset that is ageless. In the broader sense of figuring out what really matters in life. In the zone between total career mode and total retirement, many want to discover or rediscover their passion. Create a legacy. Turn, to re turn careers into callings. Success into significance. To make a difference. Portfolios become an ongoing, ageless framework for self-renewal. Here's some strategies for a portfolio life. Tell the story of your life. Narrative is a powerful tool for self-discovery. Accomplishments leave clues and increase self-esteem. Connect with others. Network. Develop your goals. Goals prepare us for change. Goals yield purpose. It is a time to revise, reflect, and rebalance. Do your portfolios have voice? As Maya Angelou says, when words are infused by the human voice, they come alive. Do your e-portfolios represent digital identity, include reflection, and provide an opportunity to make meaning? I think e-portfolios are essential for 21st century literacy. And as my cl I close my presentation, I want to remind us that reflection and relationships are at the heart and soul of a portfolio and social networking, not the technology. And so my final wish to you is that all of your electronic portfolios and social networking become dynamic celebrations and stories of deep learning across the lifespan. Thank you very much.